Hello everyone. This is Nabil Ahmed from Midas IT, India. So today, this presentation is all about bridge bearings, the various kinds of bearings used for bridges. I hope you will enjoy this session. So, first of all, what are bridge bearings? Bearings are the medium for transfer of forces from superstructure and substructure. So the, the bridges which require dissipation of rotational and translational forces that are non-integral bridges, uh, bearings are used. So the deformations can occur due to thermal expansion or, or contraction, elastic deformation under live load, seismic forces, creep and shrinkage of concrete, settlement of supports, longitudinal forces arise, uh, arising due to tractive or braking efforts, and wind loads. So the various kinds of uh, bearings can be classified on the basis of their material, and on the basis of the degree of freedom they offer. So the various kinds of bearings are sliding bearings, rocker and roller bearings, knuckle bearings, elastomeric bearings, and pot PTFE bearings. So starting with the first one, that is sliding bearings. So a sliding bearing consists of a system of two plates which slide over each other. So these are the simplest kind of bearings. These bearings permit translation in longitudinal and transverse directions unless and specifically uh, unless they are specifically restrained in one of the directions by guides. So the common materials used for this kind of bearings are mild steel plate over another mild steel plate. Uh, so coefficient of friction between two mild steel plates will be in the range of 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. Again, the top plate will be mild steel plate in another type of uh, sliding bearing. And the bottom plate will be phosphor plate, phosphor bronze plate, sorry. So here the coefficient of friction will be around 0 0.15 and the third type of sliding bearing can be of PTFE polytetrafluoroethylene type over stainless steel plate. So here the coefficient of friction will be lesser than 0 0.08. So as pure sliding bearings cannot uh, restrain rotations so can restrain rotations but uh, cannot restrain translations. So pure sliding bearings can only be used when the rotations caused by deflection at the support are negligible. So they are therefore limited to a span length of 15 meters or less as per ASHTO code. So the roller, moving on to the second type of bearings, roller and rocker bearings. So roller and rocker bearings are primarily used in steel bridges. So they, uh, they simulate a simply supported condition wherein ro roller is the pinned end and uh, rocker is the pinned end and roller is the free moving end. So the roller bearings can have a single roller or multiple roller. So based upon the long allowable longitudinal movement and the load coming on the bearings, multiple rollers can be used. Then the second The second half, that is rocker bearings. 
So this is the configuration of a rocker bearing, wherein the top girder will be attached to the sole plate, and then the sole plate or the rocker plate will be attached to a pin assembly, which will be further attached to a rocker plate assembly. So this rocker plate can be of free type or expansion type. So this is the expansion type. I'll show you the other type, which is the fixed type. So in expansion type, the pin as well as the rocker plate can rotate. But in fixed type, only the pin rotation is possible. So these are the two types of rocker bearings. Then moving on, uh, these are the pictures of rocker bearings, the free type and the fixed type of rocker bearings. And then moving on to the knuckle pin bearings. So they are combinations of rocker and roller type bearing. So again, you can see the top half is a rocker, rocker type bearing and the bottom simulates the roller kind of bearing. So this kind of bearing can accommodate rotation as well as translation. So it basically consists of a saddle plate assembly resting on the knuckle which is rigidly attached to knuckle slab which further translates on a set of rollers linked by link plates so that the movement of both the rollers are uh, same and then both the rollers will be resting on the base plate. Again, knuckle, there are knuckle cylindrical bearings, knuckle leaf bearings and knuckle spherical bearings. So knuckle cylindrical bearing will allow unidirectional rotation, whereas knuckle spherical bearing will allow multidirectional rotation. Knuckle leaf bearing is similar to pin rocker bearing, but it has multiple leaves instead of a single sole plate as in case of rocker bearing. Moving on to the fourth type, elastomeric bearings. So elastomeric bearings are the most common and widely used bearings for bridges. Elastomeric bearings comprise of elastomers, which are polymeric substances obtained after vulcanization of rubber. The elastomeric pads can be directly used as plain elastomeric bearings type but plain pads are very light and they can they have tendency to bulge under heavy weights so in order to reduce that bulging ten tendency we induce steel reinforcement in between the layers of elastomers so these steel sheets separate the layers of elastomers completely and they're encased within elastomeric material. So for vertical load, each layer of elastomer behaves like an individual pad in elastomeric reinforced bearings. And when for a horizontal strain, each layer is strained and the strain is additive for each layer. So therefore adding steel laminates is a convenient way to accommodate large lateral movements for the same amount of compressive loads compared to the plain elastomeric bearings. Then there can be fiber reinforcement also which can be added to elastomeric bearings in the form of glass fiber. So the stiffness of elastomeric bearings can be calculated from this formula. So the first one is the formula for 
horizontal stiffness, stiffness and the second one is for vertical stiffness. So the horizontal stiffness is multiplication of shear modulus and the plan area, planar area of bearing divided by the thickness of elastomers and the vertical stiffness is given by the instantaneous compression modulus of elastomeric steel composites into the elastomer gross plan area divided by the total thickness of elastomeric bearing. So these values generally we input, we calculate and then we input these properties as the properties of material links in Midas Civil when we are simulating the behavior of elastomeric bearings. Then moving on to again a very popular bearing, pot PTFE bearing. So a pot PTFE bearing consists of a circular non-reinforced elastomeric pad which is fully enclosed in a steel pot. So you can see this is the confined elastomer. So the elastomer is prevented from bulging by the pot walls and it acts similar to a fluid under pressure, under high pressure. So the assembly of a pot PTFE bearing consists of a steel sliding plate which slides over PTFE disc and which rests in a steel piston plate which further rests of, upon the confined elastomer over a cylindrical steel pot. So again, pot PTFE bearings can be of multiple types based on the allowable translation. So the fixed pot PTFE bearing consists of a piston on top provided with external sealant which fixes the piston so that it can only rotate in a horizontal direction. So this can rotate around this direction but it cannot translate in any of the directions. So this is the kind of fixed pot PTFE bearing. Again the free type of elastomeric bearing does not have sealants so it can slide, this, this steel plate can slide over the pot PTFE so this is, this allows translation as well as rotation in all the directions except for the vertical and then the same kind of bearing we can provide guides as you can see these guides are there over here so they are going to translate in uni uh, in one direction so this can be modified with guides to make a sliding type of pot PTFE bearing so based on translation translation permitted, rotation and loading resisted by the bearings. So these are the various bearings which can allow these translations, rotations and load resistance. So the tick marks show the suitable bearings for these configurations and the S over here stands for special considerations required for that bearing to consider let's say if I take a plane sliding bearing for transverse loading resistance so special considerations will be required for plane sliding bearing for that kind of transverse loading resistance so I'll show you how to model this configuration so we are having a span of 39.75 plus 45 plus 39.75 meters, three span continuous box girdle bridge. So I'll show you 
how to simulate this kind of bearing configuration. So here you can see, so this these this bearing is the fixed bearing. So this is the fixed pier. So this is the fixed bearing, and then this bearing is going to translate only in transverse direction. This bearing can translate only in longitudinal direction, and this bearing can translate in all the directions. So generally, for these kind of configurations. Various kind of pot PTFE bearings are used. So I'll just open the model. So this is the model wherein the top line, the, uh, the top line element is the box cutter element, and the bottom nodes are the bearing top and bottom nodes. So I'll show you the boundary condition. Adopted for this case. So you can see at all the locations, we will be providing at the support locations the diaphragm section, the thicker section. So I've just connected the top node with the bottom top nodes of the bearings, and then these. Uh, the elastic links simulating bearings, but this I have given directly elastic link, uh, elastic rigid link property. So I'll be giving the bearing properties at the bottom of these nodes. So I'll just select these two, all these bottom nodes, these set of bottom nodes and separate it out from this this view so these are my bottom set of nodes for bearing assignment so as you can see this bearing is the fixed bearing so i'll just select that bearing first so this bearing node i'm selecting and I'm going to boundary, define supports, and I'm clicking on D all. I'm fixing it in all the directions. I'm clicking apply. So, and you can see this bearing besides the fixed bearing is fixed in longitudinal direction. So, I will just remove the Y constraint from this. As you can see, the Y translation is allowed for this bearing. So I am removing the Y constraint and I'll click on apply. And then I am selecting these bearings which are fixed in Y direction but free in X direction. In the longitudinal direction, they are free. So I'm selecting this as the support config configuration for these bearings and for the remaining three bearings they are free in both the horizontal directions only the Z is re restrained so I'm assigning this kind of support so this completes our support condition assignment which will be simulating this kind of behavior so after this we can get the rotations and translations after analysis and then we can proceed with the bearing design so I'll just show you a sheet wherein bearing, uh, bearing design has been carried out as per ASHTO LRFD codal parameters So here, basically we will be requiring inputs from the model so that dead load and live load for all the bearings we'll be getting from the model and then the rotation in transverse direction as well as we'll be requiring the rotation in longitudinal direction. And then the strength limit state minimum vertical load so all the inputs 
which are required for the design are in yellow. So for optimum bearing design on the basis of these loads we decide the suitability of the bearing. So these are the various kind of bearings. So for this kind of load we are selecting elastomeric bearings and so the preliminary bearing properties we are assuming these as the bearing con configuration. So the length of bearing I'm uh, assuming 14 inches, the width as 15 inches and then the elastomer layer, the top layer thickness as 0.25 inches, the internal layers thickness as 0.375 inches and the steel reinforcement thickness as 0.1196 inches and the number of steel reinforcement layers will be 9. So my internal Elastomer layers will be 9 minus 1, that will be 8. And there will be two outer elastomeric layers of this thickness. And then the material properties for the elastomer, the elastomeric hardness, I'm taking 50 durometer. And then the shear modulus of elastomer, 0 0.095 KSI and the creep def deflection at 25 years divided by the instantaneous deflection CD value I'm taking 0.25 yield strength for steel reinforcement I'm taking 50 KSI so now there are two methods for designing the bearings so method A is a conservative method which gives bearings with lower capacity and method B requires additional testing and quality control so we are going ahead with method A prescribed in S14.7.6 of ASHTO code. So first and foremost the calculation of shape factor of bearing. So before that two requirements should be met for the the internal layers of elastomers must be of same thickness and the thickness of the outer layers should not exceed 70% thickness of the internal layers. So you can see we are having 0.25 inches as the thickness of our outer layers and 0.7 times of internal, thic uh, internal layers thickness is 0.26 inches. So this criteria is fine and then the calculation of shape factor wherein it is uh, given as length into width of bearing divided by two times of internal layer thickness of elastomer into the length plus width. So we get different shape factors for the internal and outer uh, internal and cover layers of elastomers and then we go on with the check of compressive stress. So that can be carried out by this formula by dividing the total load upon the planar area of bearing. So this should be less than the multiplication of shape factor and shear modulus. And then the check for compressive deflection. So for calculating compressive deflection, we need instantaneous compressive strain. For, so for these properties, 50 durometer elast uh, elastomer hardness, compressive stress of 0.899 KSI and shape factor of 9.66 from table 14.7.5.3.31 we get the instantaneous compressive strain as 0 0.04. So instantaneous deflection is given by this formula. So 
we get instantaneous deflection as 0.14 inches and the creep deflection value we have taken as 0.35 earlier. So 0.035, so we add these two strains and we get the final uh, deflection value. So again, we carry out a check of this deflection with 0 0.07 times of internal thickness of elastomer. So this, this value multiplied by the strain value should be lesser than 0 0.07 times of the thickness of internal elastomer. And again, we carry out shear deformation check, wherein we club in all the deformations occurring in the superstructure. The deformations can be caused by thermal movement, construction tolerances, breaking forces or longitudinal wind forces. So here we are just considering the thermal effect for deformation. So we consider uh, the thermal strain, uh, thermal expansion coefficient and temperature difference and the length of span. So as per that, we get the deformation for temperature as 0.636 inches. So again, we carry out a check that the total thickness of elastomers should be greater than two times of this deflection. Then the rotation check and combined compression check for uh, either the rotation check or combined compression and rotation check should be carried out. So ro rotation check is for method A and ro combined compression and rotation check is prescribed as for method B. So we are following method A. So we are just going to check the rotation which is given by this formula. So here we again need the input of rotation from the software in x direction and in z direction. And n is the number of layers of elastomers, which we are taking 8 plus 1, assuming uh, the top and bottom elastomer layers as 0.5 and 0.5 half contribution to the thickness. So this again has to be checked with respect to the stress, compressive stress in elastomer. And then stability check is carried out, wherein the total thickness of elastomeric bearing should not exceed L by 3 or W by 3. So again, this is verified with the total elastomeric bearing thickness, wherein the thickness of cover layers, the thickness of internal layers, as well as the thickness of uh, reinforcement layers is added and, and compared with these values. And then finally, the check for reinforcement is carried out. So the reinforcement must be able to sustain the tensile stresses induced by compression in the bearing. So we compare the thickness of each, uh, the stresses in the reinforcement layers. And then this is the final diagram of the bearings. So you can go through this sheet and we can modify these yellow parameters and you can check the various sizes and you can alter the loads. So these parameters you can go through. So this is a design of elastomeric bearing as per ASHTO LRFD code. So thank you for listening.